Good evening. I'd like to um, call this meeting back into order and open in open session. Welcome to this evening's hybrid board of trustees meeting being held both in person and virtually. This meeting has been made accessible to members of the public on the link at the Moreland School District's website, as well as on board docs. Any person who requires accommodations to access the meeting has been asked to contact the superintendent's office within 24 hours of the meeting. And this meeting is being recorded and may be published online at a later date. And we'll go to the flag salute. It looks like we have um, some Payne Elementary students here to guide us in tonight's flag salute. Would you like to join us at the podium there and, and direct us what to do? Stand. Right hand on your heart. Ready, salute. I want to the street of honor. I want to the street of honor. Oh, that's right. We <laughs> well, thank you very much. You did a very, very good job leading us in the flag salute and in the pink pledge. I almost remembered it. <laughs> um, introduce yourselves for us. I am Kaden Bedell. I'm Lucille Lorenzo. Okay, Rosie, Lucille, and Kaden. Fourth and fifth grade. What do you like about the grade you're in? My favorite thing about fourth grade is probably learning the mm. <laughs> Math. Yeah. Very nice. What do you like about math? Absolutely. Okay. Does anyone else have any other questions for these Panthers? No, for, I'm glad. So glad that you guys could make it here. This is yes. actually the best part of uh, board meetings. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, not that the other part of the agenda is equally exciting. <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's like I can't wait to for the other approvals. Uh, but what what about this school year? Are you enjoying the most? You know, you're back after a long summer vacation. What are you enjoying the most? Good. That's nice. Same. <laughs> Good to be back in school. I love the fact that you guys did the Panther Pledge. My kids had also gone to pain, and I'm excited to hear you guys uh, say the pledge and remember to do that every time. Um, can I ask you guys, do you have any favorite uh, books right now you guys are reading? What, what do you guys like to read? Oh, great point. Me <laughs> too. Awesome. Oh, okay. always a good. Yeah. Great. And then one last question for me is: What would be the highlight of your of your day? 
Like every day you, you go to school, what is the highlight? What is one thing you like look forward to? <laughs> what did you guys say? Very nice. Did you have a question for them? Yeah. Oh. Um, I thought you were going to say coming to a board meeting no. <laughs> to a whole bunch of adults. I'm going to have to learn that Panther Pledge. I don't no. know it. So. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you so much. And I assume there are adults in the audience who are here to support you. Would you like to introduce them as well? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you, parents, for sharing your students with us, your children. And um, have a wonderful evening. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Great job. I'll report out that there was no action taken this evening in closed session and move to approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Thank you, Sharam, and a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ryan. All in favor, say aye. 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 Awesome. Comments from the public? Oh, you're right. Uh, members of the public may address the board on any subject of concern to you, including those not on tonight's agenda. However, provisions of the Brown Act preclude any action as an unagendized item, no response is required or permitted from the board or district, st district staff, and as already stated, no action can be taken. The board, however, may instruct the superintendent to follow up, which may or may not include placing the item on a future agenda of meeting. Future meetings agenda, not a future agenda of meeting. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to address the board this evening, please complete the blue public comment card within the first 15 minutes of the board meeting being called to order in public session. On the card, please list the agenda items you would like to speak to. If your comments do not pertain to an agendized item, please write public comment. When your name is called, please come to the podium and state your name and organization that you are representing. Comments are limited to three minutes per board governance manual, and it seems like we do not have any comments for today. No. Okay. Thank uh, you. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> we did not. Superintendent's report, Dr. Cross. Okay. Good evening. So Latimer School held a dedication ceremony for their Latimer, Latimer Garden and Outdoor Classroom. Uh, the principal, Hillary Gill, and assistant principal, Jenna Naylor, revealed the dedication plaques to be installed in the garden in honor of former principal, Nancy Sisler, former assistant principal, Heather Scherer, and parent volunteer, Amy Cody. Latimer also recognized several organiza organizations for funding, discounts, do donated materials, school garden knowledge, and other types of support. Secondly, our middle school project Lead the Way teachers have come together to engage in a year-long professional learning community with the Technology Access Foundation, where they're working to incorporate student voice and engagement through culturally responsive practices, fostering student success as scientists, engineers, and mathematicians. Last week, we focused on how to begin building connections and relationships with the local community, including families, organizations, and regional industry, and how site and district leadership can support these efforts. 12 middle school math teachers, <laughs> um, along with site and district administration, went to the Joel Bowler Math Conference in Stanford, was that last week or the week before? Um, and we are looking at determining our best path forward for mathematics instruction. And this group learned how teaching through big ideas kind of connects Concepts in math can increase student engagement. Um, they practice floor to ceiling tasks, which are naturally differentiated and have different entry levels for students um, based upon their, their level of expertise. Um, and they are committed to trying these different strategies in their classrooms and then bringing their findings back to a group, sort of an informal committee um, to do some future collaboration and planning and discussion about what we might do um, in future. We also had our first district 
collaboration meetings, which we've talked a lot about, and you'll hear again from principals, I imagine, tonight. Elementary sites are wrapping up their first round of data collab meetings, and we've been able to have full days with substitutes, um, thanks to our fabulous HR team, where te uh, teachers are released from their classroom for the whole day and can just be in collaboration, looking at data, planning, learning new content, skills. It's been really amazing. I'm sure you'll also hear about that. So they've been looking at our new iReady I data, Pontus Vanel data, so focusing mostly on reading and math. Um, and then at our instructional leadership team meeting, we have been working with Laura Lipton. So last Wednesday, we had our introductory training, which defined learning focused supervision and the qualities that drive the type of supervision that a principal and assistant principal would have when they're coaching and growing their teacher's practice. Um, we'll work with her for two four week uh, sessions where we practice planning out conversations um, so that we learn how to increase teacher capacity and improve instructional practice. Oh, this one I'm really excited for. The MEF pumpkin patch is back. Uh, I'm super excited to attend what I've heard is an incredible event. So mark your calendars for Fridays through Sundays beginning October 14th through the 31st, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. There will be themed events, including movie nights, terrifying tunes with our student musicians, which I believe is on the 21st of it October. Um, there'll be carnival games and so much more. So MEF is also once again partnering with the Grimm's Hollow to host both a family-friendly version um, and the Scary Haunted Trail. I do not do Scary Haunted Trails. I will be doing the family <laughs> version. Um, so want to give a shout out to MEF for bringing this important community event back for our families. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. Uh, this Thursday, a small planning team is going to be meeting with our consultants from the Glenn Price Group to start planning out our approach to strategic planning engagement. So uh, we are coming to the end of our current strategic plan, which was originally developed in 2010, 12 years ago. Um, lots has changed in the educational landscape since 2010. Um, the plan is set to sunset this spring of 23. So we want to get out, engage our students, our families, our community, our staff in trying to understand the vision for the future of the Moreland School District and put together a new strategic plan. So be on the lookout for that process, the timeline, all of that will be communicated out widely, but I just wanna kind of give you a, a hint about what's to come. And then lastly, I wanna take this moment to personally recognize Tanya uh, for supporting me as a new superintendent and new to Moreland. Tanya's love for this district and her institutional knowledge, I um, can't look at you, is an incredible asset, which we all know. Um, and her absence will be felt by all of us. So a few years ago, TNTP conducted a study of what they called the irreplaceables. Have you ever heard of this? The teachers that um, by any measure stand out to be the very best type of teachers that you actually just can't replace with new incoming teachers. Um, and while Tanya isn't a teacher of children, uh, she has been an amazing teacher for us. So she has incredible content knowledge and institutional knowledge about this district. She's skilled in her craft. She's a culture builder. She keeps us on track and moves us forward. Um, and she is irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. um, so we may at some point find another person who shares the title of public information officer, but we all know that Tanya is so much more than that title. Um, her passion, her drive, her work ethic, I heard some tears, and Sorry. her high performance <laughs> has permeated every inch of this district, um, and she is, as a person, cannot be replaced. So we are, despite all of my jokes over the past few weeks, I'm incredibly happy for you. <laughs> um, you have earned this promotion. We support your growth and success. We know you're going to be incredible. Um, you have to promise not to be a stranger. And uh, the cabinet also has um, some flowers that we would like to present to you. You're welcome. And then I know you've got some comments that you'd like to make. And then we're going to turn it over to the board to make some comments. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. So I wrote this down because that's what I do. And then I'm not going to help you, Heather. Okay. <laughs> so I wanted to take the time to say thank you, but those words seem so inadequate for how I'm actually feeling. 
In comparison to the length of time people stay in work, and my 12 years doesn't seem that long to me. But when I think about my four superintendents, I've had 10 board members and countless board meetings I've had with you, I feel like I grew up in Moreland. My kids and my family are Moreland. For my kids, it's not just because they were students in our school, but they've had so many Friday night dinners in this conference room as I used to finish up Friday reports and board packets. Donna, would perfectly disappear. <laughs> <laughs> My seventh grade Mustang and former Panther. So it's so perfect that you guys are here tonight. Um, was two months old when I started Moreland. And Danielle, who's now a junior in high school and a former Lion and Panther, tells stories about how all her classmates wanted to be on her team for any Moreland trivia games they played in class. <laughs> she can name every mascot, every principal's name, every board member. She even knows the, the year Moreland became a school district simply from being here all the time. My husband, Simon, knows everybody in the district office, not just because he's an extreme extrovert, but because my Moreland family also became his. Through charter school requests, redistricting boundaries, opening school budget cuts, board member appointments, and the hardest of them all, figuring out how to do school through COVID, Moreland has been at the heart of everything I do. I'm excited for my new chapter, but very torn and leaving my very favorite community. I've always chosen to send my children to Moreland, way before I even lived in the district, when my pre-COVID commute was sometimes 45 minutes to an hour. Moreland staff and families have this remarkable quality that I couldn't wait to be a part of. Showcasing Moreland has always been really easy to do, as I wholeheartedly believe that this district is truly extraordinary. Thank you for being such a wonderful board, for always putting students first, for supporting staff to build incredible programs, and for being so wonderful to work with. I'm still a parent in Moreland, as well as a neighbor in the community. I'm still planning on being very involved. And in fact, I did my first agency reading lesson to a fourth, fifth grade classroom today. <laughs> so I don't feel that this is goodbye, but more of a just, I appreciate you. I consider myself so lucky to have worked with you and I will definitely miss you, but we'll see. You still have to run the meeting. I still have to run the meeting. <laughs> Uh, board member communications. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll go. I'll go first. Thank you. <laughs> um, many people don't know this, but uh, Tanya was uh, one of the first people that I met and interacted with at the school district office. I was like, a, I, when I was a modeling parent, rarely did I have a need to come to the office, but. Um, it was part of the charter school movement that Tanya and I first met, and uh, that process worked its way through. And then when the board member position came out and Tanya reached out, uh, it was a no-brainer for me to be able to kind of like be able to work closely with her. And you are one of the biggest reasons why I chose to kind of come back, uh, come and do this. And I mean, I think we all talk about Moreland family, et cetera. And, and we all live it, but very few people live it to the fullest extent that you do, Tanya. I mean, that ethos is so much stronger in you than in a lot of people. So I really appreciate that. Um, I don't think I've ever seen you without a smile, you know? So from that perspective, I'm so envious of what Las Garas is getting uh, and what this office is gonna lose. But I'm also equally happy that you are still a member of the Moreland family. Like you're still a Moreland parent, and that says a lot. So, thank you so much. Uh, I'll go next. And um, Anya's. So before I even knew you, really worked here. Our kids were in school together in kindergarten, first grade. And we did that's nation imagination together. We really built a lot, a huge bond with that. Our kids weren't just friends in the classroom, outside the classroom, which then built our friendship and relationship. Sorry, I didn't know this was going to happen. <laughs> but you know how much our family loves you. You know how much you've cared for the district. And I see it in your personal life, uh, in your professional life, and it just shows. Uh, you are a heart of the, the district. Uh, we've seen, we see you on social visits. We've gone to trips together. And there's no one else we'd rather be hanging out with outside. <laughs> um, but Tanya, you know, 
there's so much I can think of, but so much I don't have to say, but already know. Um, you'll be missed, but we know we'll see you more um, even outside of that. With our kids growing up together, um, I support your, your move and excited for things to come. So even though I want to say inside, don't go, <laughs> don't go, um, I do truly wish you the best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> um, I very, very selfishly also do not want you to go because, um, yeah, I think when I first think of Moreland, I think of your you, Tanya, and your faith. Um, I joined, you know, I'm also a new member of this family, and so I heavily relied and still rely. I mean, you just saw me, I was like always looking to you for answers, for guidance. Um, you know, Clover mentioned that you are a teacher to us, like to, to me, from the like you are the teacher that taught me the ways of Moreland, that taught me what it means to be part of Moreland, what it means to be, you know. Um, the, you set the Moreland standards so high, and I I just thank you so much. I think I really, really did survive my first year as a board member through COVID because, you know, I, I had to, the ability to text you and ask you questions. So thank you so, so much for being the teacher that I needed. Um, and I am so glad Daniel goes to Westmont. So I know I will still see you, and Simon does still fall there, so I will see Simon. <laughs> Um, and so I'm just really, really, I just have, you know, like I said, like, thank you are not words enough to really encapsulate what you have done for me, what you mean to me, to all of us here. And um, really, Los Goddesses, they have, they're just so lucky, like, <laughs> to, to really have you in there. I know you're going to go in there and really, like, work your magic as you do. And that smiling face that every time I walk in here, I see, I will miss, miss dearly. But um, I know that, you know, Los Gatos again will, yeah, they, they've earned, they, they are so, so lucky to have you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. We've been through a lot. Um, in my time on the board and your time in that seat. Um, good times and hard times, um, bonds and parcel tax and strategic plans and I, the list just goes on and on. And um, you are everything that's being said and, and so much more, a consummate professional, I've never seen you without a smile either, um, even when really it shouldn't have been there. Um, but that's what makes you so special. And that's what um, makes all of us appreciate you so much. Um, you take amazing care of things, but you take great care of people. I have always felt well cared for and well cared about. And you have made my job in this seat easier. Um, you've made my love for Moreland stronger. And um, and I'm really excited for you. I'm really gonna miss you, but I'm really excited for you. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to hearing all about it. Yeah. yeah. We have a little something for you as oh. well. Press it along, and we have more flowers. Thank you so much. You're beautiful. From all of us. I'm sure Brian has already reached out to you, and if he hasn't yet, he will. I could be here tonight. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. I don't even know what to say. I. I'm so grateful that I get to still be a parent and a neighbor here, and yeah, I don't even have the words to thank you and say how much I'm going to miss you guys. But I'm not far. It's just see you soon. Yeah, see you later. See you later. That's right.
Just not in board meetings. Just not. <laughs> oh, she'll I mean, you uh, uh, board meeting. We just won't be here. <laughs> That's you're always welcome to come to the board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to your family for sharing it because you, um, I, I don't know, you must not sleep no. um, it, from your volunteer work and your work in the district office. We know that um, you've dedicated your your life, your time to Moreland, and, and it takes the support of a family as well. So thank you to you guys as well for for sharing. Um, I have just the best memories of the bond um, campaign that we worked on together, and Danielle calling, <laughs> <laughs> making calls, and and. Um, they're not done calling. They're not done. We're going to make them call. <laughs> um, but a family affair for sure. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much for the flowers. Enjoy. It's the least we could do. We still have you for a few more days. We do. <laughs> Lots to celebrate. So we're not done. <laughs> um, that does conclude my remarks. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so I'll look back to the board um, for any other comments, communications. I just had allergies. I in my eyes. I just want to let sure everyone knows that I have allergies. So, um, I guess if we're still on board member communications, yes. um, I'll just I'll also just add in to some of the activities that I was able to attend. Yeah, great. And I did get to go to uh, Latimer's Harvest Hop oh. um, this past Friday. And the Harvest Hop uh, was looked to be a great success for all the kids and the families to be able to get together. Music was playing and games and all sorts of uh, activities that really felt very, uh, very homely. Got the kids to, to just be out there family oriented and such. And, was really excited to see everyone back out and enjoying themselves and the parents. The weather was perfect. Um, I also kind of saw that the, I wasn't able to go to the Latimer uh, opening of the garden, yet I did pass by there and got my own private tour. Amy Cody <laughs> happened to be there and um, I just kind of wandered by and I just was like looking by and Amy was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. and gave me a full 20 minute tour of every square inch of that place and gave me nice. the down low. And I was like, oh, okay. And was completely amazed by it. the project, the, the completion of it to a T, everyone's uh, contribution, the volunteers and those who uh, who donated looks spectacular. I am super excited for uh, those students who now are able to learn in a different aspect um, in terms of nature and growing and, and all the things that she was like super excited and just, I was like, this is super cool. And um, it, the, the fit and finish looked great. I know there's more to come for it. Um, and I'm really excited to see what the kids think um, and, and how, how it's being adapted into their curriculum. I've heard like the math teacher bringing his students by. I've heard of uh, the other teachers like trying to find a way to use the use the outdoor um, outdoor classroom to their advantage. And I was like, oh, that's this is really really great. So um, just like that variety, I think kids can learn in so many different aspects and ways. And this is just one of those ways. So I was really excited to see that. And that would be it. Great. Anyone else? No communications for you. Thank yeah. you. Okay, right on to um, update on COVID-19 and its effect on Moreland schools. Sure. Um, okay, that's quick, got that pulled right up. Uh, so tonight's update will include our typical information. Um, I won't be as quick as last time because we were running short on time, but this will not take long. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, our numbers are really low. So they, uh, I think last week we had two students who we know of testing positive and we had one staff member who was out for testing positive. Uh, I think the week before it was maybe two and two. So 
We are nowhere near the levels where we were last spring, last winter. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a future slide, but for now, we keep we will update this weekly, but here are our current numbers. Next slide. So our ISP independent study numbers have really remained pretty steady from the beginning of the year. We don't actually have anybody in those short-term independent studies. That's the that's really that COVID sort of you're out for more than five days and you have a plan. Um, should numbers tick back up again at some point, depending on what the rules around um, isolation are, that might come back. But for now, we don't have any in that category. Next slide, please. Uh, so last week, I talked about how the governor, um, I guess, rescinded the mandate around the employees being vaccinated in our schools, which also means that our volunteers no longer have to be vaccinated or test weekly. Those restrictions are now gone. Um, what I did not talk about or I don't remember talking about but should have is that the paid supplemental sick leave has been extended through December 31st of 2022. So it was set to end in September. Um, they have extended that through uh, December. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so here's, here's, here's some interesting data. So right now, the Santa Clara County community level, according to this uh, CDC, is at low, right? Everyone's talking about low numbers, um, and then I received a letter from the Santa Clara County uh, Public Health Department who let us know that the um, uh, the waste, is it the wastewater or the waste that the analysis that they're doing on the, the waste in the county is actually indicating that our COVID levels are just as high as they were in January of 2022. Um, so that lets us know that potentially people are not testing not reporting, um, potentially asymptomatic, right? Or just such slight symptoms that they're not thinking about testing. So COVID is not gone. Um, it still um, is affecting our community. It certainly is affecting people who are um, at higher risk for severe uh, disease related to COVID. So we want to maintain our mitigation strategies. We don't want to let up. We want to continue to be careful. We want to continue to share the message um, that we've already outlined in our COVID um, safety mitigation plan. We just, we just, um, you can use data any way you want, but the story in the news right now, people starting to forget about it a little bit and just want to remind everybody that um, we just might not know how many people are, are um, living with COVID at this moment in time because we're just not reporting, not testing. Um, so there are other indicators that it, the levels are actually pretty, pretty high. So next slide, please. We continue to test here at the district office each morning. Uh, pretty slow as of lately, although we're, we're going to continue to offer it. And then all of our sites continue to test if they've got students who may be experiencing symptoms. The sites have the ability to test um, or any volunteers. We also, if we're going to science camp or something like that, we're doing sort of um, testing um, the whole class before they go giving test kits out left and right. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of test kits uh, for us to give away before break, after break. Yeah, everybody gets a test. <laughs> if you want to test, let's, we've got tests. Uh, ne next slide, please. Oh, that's it. So that, um, that is the COVID update as of now and certainly can hopefully answer any questions you may have. And at this point, uh, even the testing, because I did come by at one in the morning and I did see folks uh, with the testing station. Uh, they were fortunately bored. That's good. <laughs> um, but it's still voluntary, right? Only if you... Okay. It's still voluntary. Yes. So no, no more ma weekly mandates for staff that are unvaccinated or volunteers that we don't know their vaccination status. That, that's all gone. So it's just strictly voluntary unless you um, test positive for COVID, mm -hmm. um, students and staff, you have to go home and isolate for the right. five days. In order to come back, you do have to have that negative test or be on that day 11 if you, if you don't want to test. That's the only time it's, it's mandatory. Right. And then the, the last question that I had is the virtual ISP. Is that still 
Are we still planning on bringing it back for the 23-24 school year, or this is when we're going to end it to 22? I think our number is dwindling, as you see. Yeah. Our peak, we were at in the high 70s, and so I have a feeling for next year, we will be back to just having site-based. We can go okay. up to 26 kids in our site-based program, ISO sure. program. And so I think if we watch these numbers and they continue to stay where they are or even drop further, we'll probably just um, encourage parents who want IC to go in that route. Okay. They're kind of flexible with their program. So um, there's some options there. Okay. Is there a requirement for us to offer virtual ISP? There is not. There isn't, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay. So we'll go right on to our reports and action items, starting with Moreland Middle School's plan for student achievement. So good evening. As you all know, I updated the SIPSA, but I did not write the original the SIPSA, right? So um, I'm going to do my best to interpret and share that. We're first talk about our academics. So uh, SFAC scores, uh, 2018, 2021, 22. We have that coming off here. So you can see that um, from 18 to 19 to the last year, there was a drop. For our students that were meeting or exceeding our standards. Um, and with that, on the reverse end, there was an increase for our students that were not meeting our standards. So it's the math data, some sort of idea here. You know, we're looking at about 800 to 900, 900 students for uh, 1819, 816 students for 21 22. Uh, the theme, as we saw in the students' arts, is that we did take a dip in our scores for students who were meeting or exceeding our standards. Um, quite a large drop um, in math in this case, and that, that, that's a concern. As we go on to our next slide, we'll see some other things. Yeah, so um, we have the two different years again showing this and the different subgroups of the short and Hispanic system. Um, special ed students. And so as you can see, the subgroups um, for both ELA and math dropped for most of the subgroups um, last year in score. And so that is something we're continuing to look at and we can learn our action items. So as we saw there, there uh, our scores aren't really being high test, just as you look, right? There's no some concerns. Um, so as we're updating um, our SIPSA, we want achievement for all. Uh, we're looking at a 10% increase in all categories, right? So uh, we were scoring 61%, now we're looking for 71%, 47%, and we're looking for 57%. Um, so we have a, a lofty goal in a lot of ways, but that's why it's a goal, because we're going to reach and kind of reach and kind of do our very best to get there, right? Um, we, Hopefully we get there, but if not, I know we're going to do everything we can, especially looking at our subgroups and how we do schools. So this year being new, we have some high leverage actions that we uh, feel are going to make a tremendous difference here. We covered, I'm sure you've heard from other schools talking about these, but iReady is exciting for us, right? We can the screener, we have this data, uh, gives us resources for enrichment and for mediation on individual skills. Uh, so that means that teachers have a lot of resources at their finger fingertips and don't have to search as much for ways to intervene. Uh, data collaboration days, we currently have not had ours. So um, those are coming up next week and the following week. So um, we're excited, a little nervous, but also excited uh, about what will come, right? Because data talks will drive our conversations and get us thinking deeper and hopefully push us to make some uh, implement issues. Um, we also have two intervention teachers. We have a math intervention teacher and a English language learner intervention teacher. Uh, the model that we have taken on is a push and model, right? So we are identifying our students of need, uh, with math. We, we 
really kind of looked at our SMAC scores, but for the most part, we're looking at teacher feedback at this point. Right? How, are they, how are you doing? What's going on in your common assessments in your class? It's kind of to identify our groups, push in, and start helping. But when we get our I ready data, we will have very specific targeted skills and small groups that we can push in. So um, this particular teacher pushes in a lot of classes. I can tell you exactly how many um, because she's doing about 20 minutes or so per group. So it might be you two get 20 minutes, you two get 20 minutes, you only get five because you only have you, know, you need to learn your threes. So it kind of depends. Um, then at that point, the teacher is moving on, right? So um, that is in the works. We're excited. Uh, same model for English language learners. Um, although math is my background. I love math uh, right now. Looking at the English language learners, uh, we have a lot of diversity, which is amazing, but it also creates an amazing problem because we have 30 languages, I believe, something like that total, and that's not the norm, right? So um, this is a new exciting problem for us to try to attack. Being new, I need to get in classrooms, right? I mean, I don't know what's going on if I don't get in classrooms. We've kind of talked about this before. I was, you know, part of my day is calendaring time and getting in to build bonds with the students, build bonds with the teachers, and really understand what is happening in, in classrooms, right? Um, if I'm not in those classrooms, it makes it very hard to trust and to push and support teachers in the meetings. So um, Melissa and I are doing our very best at this point with some obstacles um, that are presented to us. Um, to get in classrooms as much as possible. Um, we do look at the future as uh, an opportunity because when we get our third person back, we will have some more time. Um, right now, this is uh, we're limited. Uh, we're continuing the Partners in Education uh, contract, I guess is what I'm going to call it, right? Uh, I'm going to only speak on it this year. Um, I am working closely with one of our consultants. I think with him weekly, sometimes with some persons. It's virtual, so I do this email. Um, we started doing walkthroughs with Clover and myself. And so last week, uh, Jesse Rowe, who is our contact, um, walked with us as we're developing our plan on how to support uh, the school and our teachers. We are looking more at uh, like email strategies uh, with the partners in education. And then, as we've heard, Joe Bowler conference. Um, Articulation between our grade levels and our teachers. We want to break up the walls at the last time. Yeah, and I can speak more to that. So I was fortunate enough to attend um, among the teachers, math being my background as well. Um, and we really focused on the big ideas that Clover was sharing. Um, we had one grade level representative um, from our site that was present, as well as our math intervention teacher, so that she can really help the students as well. And have those different entry points where they are and how to push them um, and meet those great standards. So we're excited to, to move forward and incorporate it in our upcoming data collaboration days this year, as well as uh, working district-wide too, um, collaborating with the EDS on that uh, for the math strategies. So now we're gonna move on to school climate. Um, with this one, in our, our, uh, our SIPSA goals, we don't have a school climate. All right, so I went back, was talking with Destiny, like, where am I getting this data? Um, Melissa, we went back to the MMS student survey, I think is what it's called. Um, and there was 15 questions or so, right? Um, it, was, it was me looking at it from the outside. I went with the eye test, like, what does not look good? And then I dived in, like, what is that particular question? What is that topic? So I pulled two different ones out for us that I feel are bigger. Right? Uh, I feel like I belong in the school is the one question, and I feel comfortable talking to adults in school. The end of education, number one uh, impact is our teachers, right? So I think having an adult on campus and trusting them is extremely important. And if we don't have our belonging at the place we work, the place we go to school, or the people that we're seeing, then it's probably the time to read and evaluate where we are. So as you can see, um, strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, and uh, strongly disagree. Uh, I think the positive outcomes are strongly agree. I look personally as neutral as not good. Right? Like why aren't we on the agree side? So 
Maybe I'm wrong, maybe they're on the fence, but I have to clump in neutral disagree and strongly disagree in all my two um, responses that we can change for the positive. All right, so I did a little math there and found where we are um, on both sides of the questions. Uh, for strongly agree and agree, 56%, 21, 21% said respectively. 10% stuck with that 10% goal. Um, if I wasn't held to that goal, I'd say we need to raise those 42%. Um, those are tremendously low, in my opinion. Uh, we want our school to be safe, welcoming, um, provide an environment for rigorous learning. Students, kids need to feel that this is their home. They need to feel safe. They need to be able to talk to the adults. Um, so these are, especially as a person coming in new, um, this is an easier push because we should all be about kids and kids are my number one priority. Um, so that's what stood out. At Moreland, we follow PBIS, right? Uh, many schools do, positive behaviors, interventions, and supports. So we are uh, trailblazers and we expect our students to follow trailblazing behavior. So we are safe, respectful, and responsible. Um, and you can see that's this is what we're looking for. Right, so, in our announcements, we say a lot of those things trailblazing behaviors, citizens, school, bless you, because I'm not trying to go ahead. So, based on that, uh, for our goals for this year, is that real focus and relationships matter. So, make sure that we're staff, that is focused. Um, so, this was a theme that we kind of chose in leadership. Uh, we did a, a leadership retreat early on and you know, Kind of brought it up I'm like hey you know past principals have done this and we all kind of talked and it was like it's a great idea <laughs> what is it um had a little conversation and we put it up and came to leadership and this was the majority rules theme of relationships matter so moving forward everything we're doing we're bringing it back to that so that they can start to feel more of a sense of belonging reaching that goal um and trusting the adults on campus that are there to, to help them. So some of the action items, we implemented web at the beginning of the year, starting with our new student orientation for any new student to MMS. Um, and we had three teachers that helped lead that. Uh, and we trained on it in the summer and then trained students uh, two days, seventh and eighth grade students uh, to participate. And then they led the new student orientation in August. Uh, we also began the Safe School Ambassador Program. So in the spring, uh, May, I believe, we had students be trained as well as staff members on campus. Um, we've tried to re-engage the community the past six weeks by having coffee chats uh, on campus and off campus. Uh, volunteer opportunities were to share so that we can hopefully get more parents back on campus uh, with fewer protocols. So lunchtime hopefully for those uh, willing to be out there with the consumers at lunch. Um, not an easy task to ask for those community members uh, as well as maybe photocopying to help lighten the load um, for teachers um, as well. Home and school club of course and uh, school site council. And then upcoming we're looking forward to more dances uh, this year, continuing, continuing sports, music events, um, and then some lunch clubs. We've got the green keepers that meet every Friday to do uh, school-wide recycling uh, and actually educate you. We're going to do weekly announcements starting next week as well um, to, to spread that. We have a Zen Den uh, with a counselor three days a week, as well as five mornings a week to help students um, both before school and at lunchtime. Some other ones, uh, debate club, history and gaming club. Upcoming, we're looking at a math club. Um, so lots of other ideas. I think it was the Dice Club that came through our email today. Diversity, equity, Diversity. inclusion, LGBT plus. Uh, out. Um, we're planning that some uh, people are running these clubs are running multiple clubs. So it's kind of like one started and ready to go. So. Being added, and then we have three school um, school counselors who have already begun using the short practice um, strategies and continuing continuing after the year and building on that capacity. And they're supporting our students, they're supporting our admin, and they're supporting our, our community. That's we're really lucky to have.
We're excited all the way around, right? I mean, I go back to the time when I was presenting to you. I was so excited. Um, I'm still <laughs> But I didn't tell me we had construction going on in the blog. <laughs> <laughs> and now, of course, you can see I uh, had some pictures of the blog. It was probably 90% done at this yeah. point, complete. Um, we're still looking for a shade structure, and so some of the bigger steel uh, work is still coming. Um, but you can see that what's beautiful, right? And now our efforts are to keep it clean. Um, we have the, the upper left picture is our uh, this is our our web now this is our web training uh, for our new students. So everyone came in there and our teachers presented some over our rules. Uh, back to school night is on my side, the far right. We invited our band to come play over uh, the evening cup for us, great event for our students in our community, and it sounded great, um, especially when we think about what they were together for two thousand weeks. Um, again, we have a new teacher who started the second week of school, so we can start to perform that together. Uh, Project Lead the Way, it is my picture over here with the um, flight in space. I participated in this one. Come on, I'm like making paper. <laughs> going for the target. I came back three days for that one. I finally hit the target. My partner, uh, I left and he was very upset with me. And then he took a picture and didn't see the target. More <laughs> than I did. Uh, so it was quite fun. Uh, again, just going through the pictures. The next picture is our PDIS behavior assembly. Um, this is different for us this year. We did rotations before to talk about behaviors in this area, this is what we expect, in this area, this is what we expect. Um, coming in, I thought hitting the kids right off the bat was extremely important, and I didn't want to put it all on the kids on rotations, so instead we did an assembly to where the adults um, talk for the first part, and then the kids kind of just go around a couple of minutes, kids uh, know that the kids really listen to the kids, and they really listen to the adults, and that was the star of our show. Um, it went over extremely well. Um, We'll continue to do assemblies like that as we go, um, quarterly, monthly. Um, but we have plans to go into PE and do kind of kudos in PE, even though they want to stick with PE, and it's kind of an easier venue for us today. Uh, more web pictures, and then um, Spanish. I don't have a picture in Spanish class. So I went with an icon of Se habla Espanol. Um, it's exciting because this is the first year I believe we've had it. Um, kids are excited. Our teacher was amazing. And I can just see the potential of keeping things going. Mm -hmm. So that's our presentation on our system. We open it up to one question. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't tell you about the introduction. You know, <laughs> the, you know the, the reason why. <laughs> Board members, questions, comments? Oh, uh, I'll start to say um, I'm very happy to see the the energy to see. I know the, the numbers, like you said, the eye test doesn't show very positive, but it uh, does uh, light a fire under you to really try to prove something and get these guys, get the kids and our families going and um, like to see the goals, those nice lofty goals to kind of really um, get everyone on board. And uh, like you said, those are maybe lofty, but they're still goals. And, I'm very excited to see that and the and, and the energy that you I can tell that you are anxious to kind of get this ball rolling and, and see these um, actions in, put in place. Um, I will also say um, very excited to see the the school climate, how you address the school climate. Um, and it's true, I agree. You know, if kids don't feel like they belong, how are they going to feel like they want to learn? And so I, I like the fact that you focused uh, a lot on that and identified that and um, made it sort of an actionable area for you and the team to uh, try to get everyone on board. I think there's a lot of good, good positive um, um, activities that you have already have set forth. And um, I, I wish you know that to continue on moving forward and with, with, the, with the focus of, of uh, building that school climate, building that school um, culture, and just to love to be around your your friends and such. So I, I do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we look at it as a change is an opportunity for greatness, right? It's sometimes scary and hard, but it's at this point, we work well together and we're taking this challenge that we can do better. 
right? So uh, we need to reach, right? And it's something that's um, it's exciting, actually. It's a lot of work, but yeah, for sure. Um, first of all, thank you for the presentation, very thorough and uh, detailed. I just wanted to get your perspective, Michael, specifically um, as a you know your fresh pair of eyes coming into the district. Um, I'd love to kind of get your uh, point of view on your initial observations on you know these are these are we're talking about not only the curve is this way we're halting the curve and kind of like trying to bring it back up. So as you look at it and you've had a few months um, in. What are some of the strengths that you see that MMS has, and what are the opportunities that you see that could make or break that goals? Uh, we have a tremendous staff, right? I mean, people, we're in the people industry, right? Mm -hmm. And we can work on our relationships individually. We are having prepared uh, to school for the challenges, to persevere, to work together and be equal. Right? So I, I have to say, overall, that's, that's a strength. School. I'm so good to know everyone, but our people are good, right? Our hearts are good. They're in the right spots, right? So um, we can work with that. We can modify. So the opportunities, as I talked about before, is the early English language learners and that diversity and that gap that we have, right? Um, this, I, I talk about this with my friends, and I say this is the real world, right? I've worked in places that are not so real, right? La La Land and amazing, and then kind of lower income, right? And kind of all in one area. We have a wide range. That's an amazing opportunity to bring people together, our community together, our students together, expose, um, and take them in the place, right? Um, so I, I, there's a lot of opportunities, but I have to say our English language right now, on our mind, I think really is going to be the biggest. Um, we do have, I have a lot of stories from last year. So the opportunity to get better and make those stories disappear and rebrand our school as a positive place to be and the place to be. Um, I hope and I hope this year it's not gonna happen this year. I'll just set realistic expectations. But soon you're gonna be like, this school is the best place to be. I want every student to know here there is no private school, it is more of a middle school. Um, so that is the opportunity to take us where we are now, wherever that be, and to take us to new heights. Um, we get there, right with, with support here and the right people in place, um, some guidance. I, I think our community is ready. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Well, yeah, I just want to say thank you for um, this presentation. I really, really enjoyed the theme of relationship matter. I like the two red stars next to it. Um, just because I think, um, you know, research has shown that with brand new student, if you have that one adult on um, school, like it'll drastically, in a very positive way, like change the school experience. Um, and also speaking of relationships, and uh, since you're also a new York principal, I was just wondering if you could speak to how the coffee chat have been going. Um, you didn't go? No. I'm just, <laughs> that's totally my fault. I <laughs> but yeah, just, you know, relationship with students, you also want to learn the relationship with the parents. And so I'm just curious. Um, share a bit. You know, I had all these great ideas of talking to people. I just did talk to Tanya, and all of a sudden, all these meetings on my schedule. Which is amazing, and that's what I wanted, but I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, the first one was at Starbucks over here at West Street Mall. Um, you know, I knew where to go, you know, mm -hmm. I've never done this off campus before. Um, there were people waiting for me, there were people who had like, their coffees ready. Uh, we did it outside of the Starbucks. Familiar, big old table, kind of everyone there. 20, 30 people the entire time, in and out, right? And we had uh, Melissa Ryan was there, and some, uh, Brian's wife was there as well. I didn't have any of these people. So, <laughs> I read them as well. so um, it was really good. Melissa and Miss Fenzel told me I was fielding some very heavy questions. Do I know? I'm just being honest and interacting with everyone. So um, it went really well, longer than the hour that we planned. Um, then we had another one at school, in the school library, person told me. And that one was probably 35 people. Um, and no one was in that. That one mm -hmm. was late. Uh, and you sat down and you joined us. Um, I, it went fine. 
right? And there were some of the same people that was double kissing people coming out of the district shopping um, and just there to listen to people in principal, which is totally fine, uh, but very positive. Um, and then we have a home and school club, another coffee chat company. So going well so long. Wow, awesome. Thank you. And again, I think like both of you guys have that like excited go do it energy that I can even still feel and have been feeling. I mean, I'm sure like your students and your parents feel that as well. So it's excited to see you have this season. Thank you. I too um, appreciate your passion mm -hmm. for what you do. You obviously care and uh, want to make a big difference. And I especially appreciate um, the data, the, the close look at the school climate data. Um, that's everything. And it'll make or break a school, as you know. And so I'm, I'm very pleased to know that you're looking closely at that. Um, the one question I have is in this coming school year, what do you think your biggest hurdle may be? Uh, just being honest, right? yeah. learning the new systems, learning the protocol, building relationships, uh, making sure the staff has trust in me. Um, there are people who are immediately, right, from the doctors, and there are people who are dragging feet in some way, or maybe I'm having them drag their feet, right, or they're stuck in their, their, their ways, however you want to say it. You know, there's some people that are harder to, to get on board. I want to keep working on it, right, keep being kind, keep meeting with people, trying to be as transparent and open as possible. Um, but it takes time. So looking at a school of maybe five, some, something like that of teachers, um, I'd say we're already 70% are on board with our And then yeah. the other ones are like, oh, we'll see. And then the other people are like, well, you know, you're coming and you're going. So fine, we'll let them take that and then we'll go with everybody else because, uh, and the trains leave and stop. Nice. Thank you. Anything else from the floor? Yeah. All right. So this is going back to the to our community. We are looking for a volunteer for a math club of some sort. Um, our teachers are definitely uh, doing a lot in math. Like I can't take something else on. We're both math people. I don't know what you want to do. So they are now at the stage of volunteer to run math counts or math Olympiad or just math club. Nice. So I put that out there to you as an opportunity to be on this. <laughs> Thank you for the Thank opportunity. You. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is an action item. So we do need to vote on um, Moreland Middle School's SIPSA. Um, I'll, oh, I'll put in a motion to approve Moreland SIPSA for this school year, 22-23 school year. Wonderful. And a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Shriam. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Please stop. Moving right along to Payne Elementary School, it's a presentation. Good evening. Katie Burke, I'm from Fort Payne. I'm Denise and Angela, the assistant principal. So, we wanted to start our presentation where we started the year. This was our staff development day before school started. Um, and our message to our staff was really about where we're going. We want to get ahead of the game. We feel like the last two years we've been playing defense. And we're reacting and responding to the things the world's throwing at us, the county's throwing at us, the families are throwing at us, the students are sometimes quite literally throwing at us. So we wanted to go into this year playing offense and setting the stage for how we wanted to play the game, putting ourselves back in the role as the coaches for our students. And so the first step in doing that is setting our school climate. So we work really hard to build a safe and caring school climate because just like Marlon from middle school was talking about, if students don't feel safe and cared for, they can't learn. So we decided to move this first. And we looked at the uh, perception surveys that were put out in the spring and set two goals and some action steps. So the first one was based on the student perception survey. Uh, students treat each other respectfully at the school. So you can see we have quite a bit who are neutral or disagree or strongly disagree. 
So we need to set a goal that at least half of those neutral disagree, strongly disagree, will move to agree or strongly disagree. And then our other focus area we took from our family uh, perception survey, the school partners with families to improve the learning environment at our school. And accordingly, we started off pretty, pretty strong in this, but our uh, school site council really set this as a priority last year. They wanted this to be uh, volunteerism to increase in this school year. So we made sure to align this goal that the school site council had a vision for. So we will hope to raise our agree and disagree responses. So we have a number of things that we're already doing that we're going to continue to do. Um, some new actions that Judy was talking about are theme of getting ahead of the game. We're re revisiting that in a lot of our meetings. Um, there are community circles happening in every classroom with me. Um, teachers are really working on building those relationships with students using some restorative practices, language, language in their classroom. We were training restorative practices in the summer, and we have a number of teachers, I think at every grade level, who have uh, they would like to be trained in restorative practices. Hopefully, we will get them trained soon and they can start implementing some of this in their classroom. Our SEL coach increased to 30% this year, and our community liaison hours have also increased. So that makes her more readily available to communities who may need her. Um, we're really working hard to increase our communication and collaboration this year and being really mindful about. The technology that students are using and how they're using it and why. Um, so we're, we're seeing a decrease in technology, just making sure that it's really purposeful. We have a morning mindfulness club that's going to be starting next week that our community meetings on is actually going to be leading. And it's to give some of our students a safe start um, that we feel may need that safe start and support in the morning before school starts to give them the start to the day. Um, and then we also have a return of some volunteer positions. So we had an art and action training today. We had a big two last week. So that'll be up and running. We have a number of classrooms that have already scheduled their art and action lessons. We have one still being up mm -hmm. and running. Um, and the post teachers and room parent in our classrooms this year. Um, I have a quick question. Uh -huh. I didn't quite follow the storyline on the increase in communication and collaboration and decrease in technology. Are you saying that? Actually, I won't say <laughs> because I didn't quite track what you meant by that. Okay, so in the classroom, we're hoping that there is more communication among students, collaboration among students. Okay. Okay. And less time just spent on the device. So there. That makes more sense. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Because I I read, I read it completely the other way, which is like, even though you're seeing a decrease in people using technology, like you're. Parents are not opening emails or things like that. I kind of read it the other way. But yeah, this is, yeah. and if you find the key, let me know. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have a share with climate because that's what we spent a lot of time on beginning of the year to set the stage so we can move into academics and go full on offense on academics, ready to go. So let's look at data. <laughs> we have our FMP data, which is the reading assessment for our primary students. Um, you can see in most cases a uh, drop since 2019. Um, but what's exciting is as we've been doing our data collaboration meetings, we're looking at the start of the year FNP scores for our students. And in cohort groups, they're higher than they were at the end of the year. So they're continuing to grow and we've got a good momentum right now. So that's what we want to take and run with it. So this is a tricky slide um, because we have a pretty significant drop. Can I ask a question yes. now, or do you want me to wait till the end? You can ask anytime you want. Okay. <laughs> Going back to the previous one, uh -huh. um, it's interesting that the second grades actually improved. I'm just wondering, is it because they, like the first grade was a precipitous drop? Is it because they were in that core time when everything was really shut down and they suffered the most? Is that what? Maybe. We also were looking at 2019 compared to 2022. So all the students in blue are, are none of the students in red, right? So it's a completely different group of students. So that's why we're looking at this year's data in comparison to last year's a little okay. bit more carefully because we can actually look at 
the students who are in the seats. Okay. So you'll hear us say that a couple times. That's our focus on the data. Okay. Um, so maybe, you know, we, we make lots of predictions about what happened over the yeah. last two years, but yes. Okay, all right, thank you, that helps. All right, so this is our significant drop in our ELA SVAC. Um, but my mom showed me Pollyanna a lot as a kid, so I always tell them right side of things. Mm -hmm. And what I see is that our little time in the school was at 72% a few years ago. And so we're just going to get back there. That's our goal. Is we have a goal to get back to there because we know that we've done it before. And we're going to do it again. So we're looking at our 60% as a leaping off point. And then in math, again, a, a smaller drop, but we started lower. So it doesn't mean any less effort is needed in math this year. And so we're looking at some actions on both areas. Okay, so we looked at this one a lot. These are our subgroup students. Um, definitely drops in our subgroup students. And you'll see we added at the bottom of all of our students who took the test last spring, these are the percent of those students who fit into subgroups. And so we're not talking about a handful of students, we're talking about a significant number of students in our population. And so if we can focus on subgroup students, we can really make a difference in progress at our school site. Um, as we've been doing our data collaboration meetings with grade levels and looking at that iReady data, what we're seeing across the board so far is we have a lot, a lot of students performing at level four and a lot of students performing at level one. And in some cases, we have some teachers who have zero students in the middle at two or three. They're all ones and fours. So I think the result for us of this time off with COVID is we had students who were fully supported and had everything in place to just move forward, even with distance learning, we just kept going and yeah. did okay. Yeah. And then we have the students who didn't have the same level of support at home. Um, and didn't do as okay. And so we have this big gap now um, that's really showing in our data. And so that's what we're looking at when we make our comments. Okay, so with that in mind, we've set some goals with ELA and, and math, um, goals and actions. So with ELA, our goal is to increase our SBAC scores for all students by 12%. And that would bring us to our pre-COVID levels. Um, that's also 12% for all of our subgroups. Um, so in order to do that, we have flexible grouping in our during our literacy block for grades one through five. Um, our intervention team is pushing in to the classrooms with our most emergent readers to give some interest. Sorry, can you um, sorry, uh, explain what flexible grouping looks like? <laughs> um, so based on assessment data that teachers give at the beginning of the year, students are placed into flex groups for reading. So they are with similar students with similar needs. Okay. And then teachers can really target their instruction. And it's flexible because they could be moving um, as their levels change or their needs change, they can move mm -hmm. to different groups. And then even within that group, it's flexible. Um, but it really allows teachers to target instruction uh, for their students. Does that answer your question? Yes, okay. thank you. Um, our intervention team will be push is pushing into the classrooms with our most emergent readers. Um, we are going to be doing a guided reading refresh for all. So as you see on the next bullet, we have our intervention coach 10% this year, and she works with our intervention team, of course, a lot, and has gathered a lot of resources for us, but she's also going to be doing a guided reading refresh for all of the teachers uh, next Friday during our staff development day sharing some of the resources, but also talking about during guided reading groups. These are the things that we want to make sure that we're doing with our students, um, how to plan lessons, how to figure out what the next steps are. Um, during our data collaboration, we're looking at our iReady results in f and We're looking at um, what they can do. We're looking at what gap, where gaps might be, and then looking at what the next steps might be. We're also looking at, um, we are also taking the time during the data collaboration to plan some guided reading based on the needs of the students that those teachers have. Um, we have several teachers for their alternative evaluation this year. They're going to be doing a study on best practices in reading instruction. So they're going to be working together, doing some research, um, implementing some things that they learned in their classrooms. Uh, we'll be meeting with them several times throughout the year and then 
in the spring, they'll be presenting what they've learned to the rest of the staff on their best practices for reading instruction. And I believe at the last board meeting, some of us talked about um, the work that our district did with early literacy training in the spring. We had admins and teachers from each of the sites um, work together to come up with some uh, early literacy practices and what makes a really strong balanced literacy program. And we have non readers at every grade level. So we decided we're doing that school wide um, with all of our teachers. We have a beautiful new teacher in the source room with books for pre readers all the way to very advanced um, texts. And we have a lot of them. So we won't run out of resources to offer our students during our flexible grouping time, during construction in the classroom. Um, so we have uh, that resource room. And in that resource room, we also have a library of resources for our members. So in math, we set a goal for 10% for all students. Um, and that would bring us above our pre-COVID uh, data levels. So we wanna do even more than that. Um, some of the things that we're doing in math is looking at accelerated instruction in level small groups. So we're having those conversations with grade level teams during data collaboration about how to introduce grade level standards, even for those students who are far below grade level, so that they're getting the appropriate instruction for their grade level with all of the skills they need to follow behind it to make sure that they can do grade level skill. We are working with our school advisory committee to look at the best strategic intervention plan for math. So we have our wonderful intervention aides and teachers, and we just want to meet with it. We're taking some time to look at the data, get through our data collaboration meetings, look at, like we said, we have this really interesting data this year. So what's, we don't want to just do what we've done in the past. What's the best way to use our intervention staff to support our mathematicians at any? Um, looking at iReady and data collaboration, we, every time we've done it, about half our grade levels, and every time then we tweak the agenda a little because we learn something new as we poke around in the data. Um, last year, we presented to you about our math academy, which was using those Joe Bowler principles that you heard about and bringing that to select students after school. We loved it so much, we're going to bring it to everyone this year. So we're doing that right now, and it's fourth and fifth, and then immediately following will be third. Um, where we teach them how to be a math person. Everyone's a math person. And so they're doing that in the classroom with the teachers participating so that in future years, it'll just be part of our math program campaign for everyone. Uh, next week, we start an Imagine Math Facts Morning Club. So students who are still struggling in second through fifth with math fact fluency can practice that before school. And it takes away the need to do that during their math time. Since during the math time, we want them doing grade level standards. Um, again, a careful selection of tech use in class. And so part of our teacher research program includes some new math resources. We're trying to add to that for interactive ways students can practice math. Um, we're doing board math in a lot of rooms, which is something that Norman did 15 years ago. <laughs> it was a while ago. But in the past couple of years, we've really been talking with teams about how board math has this preview review model. And it's really helpful for all of our students, except especially with an acceleration model of showing here's a little hint of what's to come, and here's a little review of what you should already be able to do, and then let's move on with our map today. Um, and we can strategically plan that preview and review so it gives them what they need to um, perform that day. And then tomorrow night, you're all welcome. We have family math night. And so we have a teacher at every grade level who's in, um, presenting to families. Students are invited, and they are going to learn about grade level standards, the, the big hitters in that grade level, um, any math vocabulary that families might need to learn that year, and then games they can do at home to support their students. This is the first one this year, right? But yes. you have done one in the past. We have done it in the past. Mm -hmm. What's the attendance like in those? Is it, do you see a lot of parents and participants? I'll tell you for sure tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but we did do an RSVP, and um, it's looking pretty good for us. I think we were at about... 70 families. Um, and so each grade level will have a, a full room. Yeah, so that's nice. It's a good number. Um, question for you, Katie. In terms of like um, e e your goal for ELA is to increase it by 12% and then math by 10%. 
Um, are you are you more optimistic about the uh, swings that you can make with ELA, or are you, or is that more reflective of you're less optimistic about math? In the sense like, like I'm optimistic about both. Okay. Uh, we said twelve percent because we really wanted to set a goal for ourselves to okay. return to pre-COVID levels. Got it. Okay. And because that is significantly above where we are, we're we're not going further above that quite yet. But we want to try to get back to where we've been. In math, if we just went back to where we've been, it would be like a three percent goal, and we didn't want to set that low. So we that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. I really I appreciate the the lofty goals. I've always said that. You got this. All right. We have one more. So there's just a few things that were weren't represented on those slides. We wanted to share with you. Um, this year we're doing something that we haven't done before, and that's a passion project in Kinder Proofit. And so our school-wide PBL, uh, we always start here with school-wide PBL, and the big question this year was, what is a dream? And that's leading into what is a passion and leading into a passion project. So every month we have an activity for each class to do, um, culminating at the end of the year with a passion project. In some cases, individual to the student, and when they're younger, the class will do it together. And so we'll have a presentation of those in the spring. Um, we have our beautiful new outdoor learning space, which you can see there that teachers are starting to use. Um, we love it. So big thanks to our home and school club and to MLT for making that happen for us. We still have concrete chess tables on order that are going to be installed currently oh, sitting right in front of the library <laughs> that we'll use there as well. Um, not included in here, but recently confirmed, we are having a movie night on October 14th, and we're doing it at Pumpkin Lodge. So oh, that's right. really exciting because it, they do a lot of the work for us and we get more mm -hmm. up and bring more okay. customers to their pumpkin patch on that awesome. Tuesday night. So, um, it's a win-win and we're really excited about, um, we already said, this should just be a tradition. <laughs> but we're done. Yeah, put in um, and then our next big event, we can bring, um, reach that goal of volunteers on campus is our Panther Crowd, which is our walk -a -thon, and that's Friday, October 28th. Um, I can't tell you the theme because it hasn't been announced yet, and I know we're running live, so we'll whisper it to you later. <laughs> we have to announce it at pain. Sit here. That's what we have. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Go to the board for questions, comments. Um, thank you for, again, the presentation. I was just curious if you could, about these passion projects, um, what are some of the things that, it says every month there's like a mini activity or something, what are some of the things that have been done? So this, the first month is that, what is a dream? Where they just start to talk about what that means to have a dream and how that could lead into having a passion. In okay. the upcoming months, we have a lesson that will push into our STEAM lab each month that is um, like where they're brainstorming. What are things I'm curious about? What are things I love? Mm -hmm. I, there's some, there's not one. <laughs> it's brilliant, Shelly, but I don't think <laughs> um, So they're just getting these lists of things that intrigue them. Mm -hmm. um, and then in January, our first day back, we're going to do a smart start day. And so rather than have a traditional day, the plan is that um, our staff will share their passions with their students. So um, if you have a teacher who loves yoga, you might provide a yoga class for students or um, uh, man club. Come on over. <laughs> so the, their chance to show this is something I'm passionate about and here's how I practice it. And then they're going to do kind of like a March Madness grid, narrowing down all the ideas that they brainstorm until we choose that one talk. Then we'll take off uh, the rest of the year deciding how they want to learn more about it and then share their learning. I know. Presentation day. Awesome. Thank you. I also really enjoyed the Panther. Um, uh, graphics. Yeah. Graphic now, yeah. like, what do you call that again? Your math thought. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what color is a little off? But that's okay. <laughs> um, I, I, one of the things that I think uh, I, I really admire, as I said, the lofty goals, but I think those are necessary to be able to kind of give everybody something to shoot for. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see that you're there. Uh, if you're talking about it, I'll ask the same question that I asked Michael as well. 
in terms of like what you from your POV standing here looking three months, six months, nine months down the road towards the end of the school year, where do you think are some of your biggest roadblocks to I getting to that 10% and 12% bump ups? I think that the gap we have is a challenge because okay. when teachers are looking at, let's say, I'm a third grade teacher and I'm ready to teach math, um, I have a big group of students who are just ready to go and another big group of students yeah. who have a lot of needs, skill sets that they don't have yet um, that they need in order to meet that third grade standard. And so we're just having to really look at instruction differently and see how to balance those small groups so that we can give students in need what they need, but then also the students are ready to go, send them offline. And um, that it's more significant than we've seen in the past, looking at the high ready data. <laughs> Never looked at a set of data for a class before and you're not seeing any two or threes. Yeah. That's unusual. And yeah. so that's just an interesting predicament. Uh, again, um... You know, you have my full support for, for the lofty goals. I mean, I've never seen Pollyanna, so I don't know. Well, you should. <laughs> I, I base my positivity on life with Brian and uh, from Monty Python, you know, always look on the bright side. <laughs> but uh, wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll, I'll say that um, I do appreciate uh, how you started it off with. Uh, building that culture again, uh, looking at the how you're going to get buy-in from your staff, how, what you guys are going to focus in on, and then moving forward together with that same goal in mind. And I've always uh, appreciated, you know, I think when we were at Payne, it was already apparent, like the culture there, like the Panther Promise and all of those things. I mean, one of the the the, the richness of of uh, thing was the fact that it was so diverse. It was such a diverse, I mean, how many different languages, like you said, I mean, the whole district, but I do remember uh, Peen having that huge amount of diversity. And one way to kind of get people on board, you know, you get everyone kind of saying the same Panther promise. You got, it doesn't matter which language, everyone in every class knows it. Mm -hmm. And now the kids feel like they're, oh, you know it, we know it, I know it, the teachers know it. And that builds that community with the kids even years down, I remember my years, my kids aren't there anymore, but they still would remember it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and focusing on that, uh, you know, at the beginning and then setting that forth. So getting the buy-in from the, the, your staff and the teachers to really focus in, um, I can see that that was a focus for you guys to really move forward this year, especially after these last two years. And it's a challenge. I do uh, appreciate the, uh, the offensive approach of really head for head first going in there and then attacking it. And I'm really excited to see all these actions be put in play and just see continue to see the growth. And I know there, there are challenges nonetheless, but um whatever support like uh Shiram was asking, like there there are going to be challenges that you may have and however way we can support you with that, um, you know, just let us know. Mm -hmm. I have a, I'm having a chuckle over here because um, I shared with Katie, my eldest uh, child, who's now 27, just um, one of his best friends from Payne Elementary School just recently got married. And so there was a few Payne alum. <laughs> and um, my son burst into song and couldn't believe how, you know, Payne. <laughs> Yeah, and it. We too had a terrific experience at Payne, and I mean, I attended Payne Elementary. I, you know, it's it's a great school. All of our schools are great schools, um, but I too really appreciate the focus on climate. Um, you know, the the, I have a lot of faith in teachers, and their ability to teach curriculum. Um, but building climate, building culture, that's, that's really something. And so I mentioned it with Moreland Middle as well, that, you know, it, it makes or breaks an experience and, um, and sets kids up for, for such a success if it can be done well. So um, I'll ask a very similar question, which is, what do you see your biggest hurdle in this coming year? 
gap, right? The gap. Yeah. I mean, that's it's just it's it's, it's just, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. I mean, and then because of that gap, like we have to get those ones up in order to get back to where we were. Right. These these kids are doing okay, and we're going to just keep them going. But it's bringing these ones up, and it is such a difference between the two groups. Mm -hmm. so, that's what's going to make the difference in reaching our goals. How does your staff feel about the data? Do they also see it as really interesting? And yeah. <laughs> in all our data collaboration meetings, we're looking at it. I don't have any juice degrees here. Um, they naturally start to separate into smaller groups anyway. So, you know, you can still come up into smaller groups, but um, they're also really. In finding, they're the ones who are finding things in iReady that are teaching us that we can teach others. And so they're digging in there and finding the resources in iReady. And so that's nice. It's not just the data that's coming to you, like here's a color coded spreadsheet, and then we need to figure out what to do with it. It's nice that there's some <coughs> paths to take in iReady to um, it helps group students and ideas of what to do next. And um, that's that's helpful when you have this big discrepancy between student groups. Right, because you can't, uh, you obviously need to support the kiddos, the ones, but those kids who are already at four, they, they also deserve to be challenged and yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Sorry. Uh, qualitatively, does the, uh, does the experiences in the classroom reflect that big gap? Because I don't, to your point, I, I don't think in the other steps that we've seen so far, we've seen that that marked gap. Are your teachers like in, instinctively feeling that in the classroom qualitatively as well? When they when they interact with the kids? I don't think so. I think mm -hmm. a second grader is a second grader when they walk okay. through that door. And then when I sit down and have to teach them um, addition strategies, that's when I see the differences, right? Okay. Between um, the students who are ready for that and the students who are not mm -hmm. quite ready, but I've got to get them ready. And so, but just in the classroom, they're all just kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I should, before, um, before I let you, you go. <laughs> um, I had made a note during the MMS presentation, but it's maybe a good question for an elementary campus, and that is fifth to sixth grade articulation. What does that look like? Well, it has looked different over the years. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to talk about it and see what we want it to look like. Okay. Um, the times that we've gotten fifth grade teachers and sixth grade teachers together uh -huh. have been very valuable. Um, we learned some things in those discussions. I remember a big one was um, sixth grade teachers saying, we don't need them to come in writing novels. We need them coming in writing a solid paragraph. Nail down this paragraph in different genres. And that, that's what we want when they come to middle school. And so really specific details like that okay. are helpful because the standards get so weighty towards the end of Elementary, there's a lot you, you could spend time on, and so it helps them to focus on what they need. I think the next step um, would be doing that again with math, um, because I think math, again, there's, there's this many standards, and some of them take that long to teach, and so which ones should we focus on in order to make them successful mathematicians moving forward, not just on fifth grade form. So it sounds like it's an opportunity, though, to kind of revisit that mm -hmm. conversation. And mm -hmm. you know, I've had the strategic plan on my mind. And one of the big takeaways the last time we went through it was a toolkit, right? Mm -hmm. Kids, kids needing to know how to use a binder, for example. And now I see that it happening in fourth and fifth grade. And mm -hmm. so they're ready when they get to middle school to have multiple subjects that they're covering. So um, that's great. I appreciate that. And that's it for me. I thought you were saying before the bond you were gonna sing the same song. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Morning each day, every boy and girl that is coming uh -huh. to me forever will boast and brag. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> oh my gosh, this has been quite the night. Um, so, <laughs> so, thank you for trying. <laughs>
I'm just covering all the bases tonight. I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to approve Kane Elementary Schools and SIPSA. Um, I'd like to say. And okay, thank you, Shram. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank, thank you. Thank you. So that happens. Go. <laughs> thank you. Good night. Did he start being the song? He, he can, he sang the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. Well, did he still sing it at school? Yeah, I think so on occasion. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I should ask them. Oh, uh, anyway, uh, action and discussion items, public hearing on resolution 5, 2022, 2023, certifying the sufficiency of textbooks and instructional materials. So we need to open a public hearing. Okay, we do that before our presentation. Okay, so I will open the public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak on this item? Carlos. <laughs> hearing none, I will close the public hearing and move to approval of the resolution. Is this time to ask a question or is it, should I have asked it before the public hearing? Uh, you can still ask, yeah. Oh, um, the when I was going through this, I didn't quite understand the the language. Are are we approving that, or are we approving the fact that there are sufficient material? Right. Okay. All right. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So it is recommended that you approve this resolution number five because we are sufficient in our textbooks for all of our core content areas. I'll make an approval. Uh, sorry, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the textbook sufficiency posting 2022-23. Now second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. On to resolution six, recognizing a state of emergency and reauthorizing teleconference meetings pursuant to AB 361. Any questions, comments? I know we, we, I read in the Friday report, need to do this until the end of December, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. There was A and B. Did we combine the two of them? There were two motions, public hearing for uh, English language arts, maths, and science, and the second one was, at least the agenda shows two. The second action was a resolution. The first one was the oh, public the hearing, Got it. And, then, and then we took action. I'm you. with you. Thank you. you took mm -hmm. you took action. <laughs> I thought there were for two different subjects. And we them. Thank you. Uh, so back to resolution six. Any questions, comments? A motion to approve. I have a motion to approve resolution six. Thank you, Shelley. In a second. I'll second. Thanks, Ryan. All in favor, say aye. 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 On to change orders. Mm -hmm. Change order number one for Pioneer Contractors Inc. Yes, so um, we're here to request approval to change order number one uh, for hiring counsel for the Kamachi Group project. Um, this is a change order of $43,250 and it's for uh, unforeseen conditions. <clears throat> the new project is mostly uh, dry rock uh, that came after the COVID nature. So, where, where was this? Uh, this is the Coventry site. It's actually oh, the Coventry site. Yes, on uh, Campbell Avenue. Okay. okay. Any other questions, comments? A motion to approve? I'll move to approve change order number one for Pioneer Contractors Incorporated. And a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ryan. All in favor say aye. 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 On to change order number one for Pioneer Contractors Inc. for the old Easterbrook roof replacement. Uh, similar to uh, the previous, the earlier one, it's a uh, change order uh, to actually a deducted change order in the contract we had an allowance. And we might use the entire allowance. Ooh. Okay, nice. Wow. <laughs> oh. That's the best kinds of change yeah. orders. Uh, questions, comments, a motion to approve? A motion to approve change order number one for pioneer contractors. Thank you. The old Easter Road replacement. And I'll second it. Thank you, Shelley. All in favor say aye. 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 On to change order number one for ESCOM. 
ESCOM building, builders is for the Coventry site again. Uh, ESCOM is the contractor that did all the concrete flat work site work, uh, work for us. Uh, when we did the roofing project, we had to time the rainwater meters or the downspouts into the drainage system. And they did their work and we had a again an allowance and we didn't use it all, so we're getting uh four thousand dollars. $4,002 back. Awesome. That's great. Any questions, comments? A motion to approve? A motion to approve order number one for ESCON Builders site for project. Thank you, Ryan. And a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Shriram. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. On to change order one for KYA Group LLC. Yes, uh, uh, the Kaya Group is the contractor that's doing the district wide uh, paging system upgrade. Um, and the change order here is an extension of time. I, I take it back, they're doing the paging system and lighting at pain. Uh, the, they are done with the paging system. Uh, the materials for the lighting has not arrived. Actually, it's arriving in waves right now, but it's not for here. So they re they are requesting an extension of time to December 31st. Right. Right. Request. Are they going to wait till everything gets here and then do it? No, they actually school? started. Uh, 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 it, they started today okay. at one classroom, just kind of dry fit and dry run process. So okay. uh, hopefully next week they'll be full for. They don't have all the equipment here um, or material here, but uh, what they have, they'll start installing. And this is lighting inside the classrooms? Inside and outside and parking lots and okay. wherever there's a light fixture, we're going to be okay. And so for the lighting that are inside the classrooms, will it disrupt? Or can we we're doing one around? Work after hours, after four o'clock in the evening. And the change order is just mostly on the date. There's, 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 there's no change, no, change in the amount. No cost change. It. No, it's just extension of time. Okay. And no foreseeable reason for it to go past December 31st. Right now, we we they're telling me that they're going to receive everything in time to complete by December. Awesome. Okay. Anything else? Any uh, motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve change order one for DW paging systems at Payne. And I'll second the motion. Did you say Kaya? Oh, Kaya. Sorry. Did you say Kaya? I didn't. Did I? Yeah, this, uh, KYA. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm seconding that motion. Thank you, Shelly. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. On to change order number one um, for Moreland Middle School courtyard renovation. This is the change order to uh, Era Construction, a uh, contractor that, that is working on or is working on the uh, courtyard at Moreland School District. Uh, the change order is for 27163 and this is to re replace uh, the main storm line that was discovered once we removed all the existing uh, structures and asphalt and everything. Uh, we were going to tie into it. We saw that it needed replacing, so we replaced that. About 177 feet. Away. So it was just, you think it was damaged prior to, not during demolition? Yeah, it's, 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 it's all cast iron. Cast iron starts rotting from the inside out. So it was about, 50%. Okay. Any other questions, comments on this? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? I'll put in a motion to approve change order number one for the for a construction group for the Moreland Middle School courtyard renovation. Great. And a second? I'll second it. Okay, sure. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries on to the consent. Any questions, comments? A motion to approve an aggregate? A uh, motion to approve an aggregate for consent items. Thank you, Ryan. And a second? I'll second it. Shelly, all in favor say aye. 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 Future meeting dates. Uh, we know we have a couple coming up in October. One is a study session, the second one is a study session. Um, and then also uh, 
as you know, three of our board positions were up for re-election this year. And since there were no opponents who filed to run against our incumbents, we did receive the certificate of election facts from the Register of Voters. Um, their rules state that in order to avoid creating short-term seats, uh, we need the board to approve the certificate of election facts prior to the November 8th board meeting. Okay. So since everyone will be here at our next meeting, uh, we will have this approval take place at the next board meeting, which would be October. October not 11th. October 11th. Um, and then in addition, the oath of office for Heather, Brian, and Ryan. At the, at the October? Yeah. At the October 11th. Isn't there something um, something to do with timing and the December meeting? Does that come into play at all? Like the next, the organizational? Seat. So the next seat would go into effect until December, but they said thing. that Oath of office, we can do it at the same time. I just okay. checked with the registered okay. voters. Yeah. Perfect. I'm looking at you like you can just read yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that. Um, okay, cool. That's very exciting. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, okay. Anything else on future meeting dates? Um, I will not be able to attend the October 25th meeting date. Uh -huh. And it is very likely that the number eight, I'll be the mom. Okay. So I will let you know as we get closer to that date if I will be attending the OC. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else on future meeting dates? Announcements, reminders, requests? So we have um, board site visits. Mm -hmm. We got our handy dandy handout. Um, I don't know if y'all are able to look at that now or if we have the link, we can just go in. Okay. And okay. okay. You will like your day. Okay. I missed it. I didn't Okay. All right. Are you waiting for Latimer to fill that in? Yeah, are we waiting on Latimer? information yeah. okay. um anything else on announcements reminders requests i don't want to adjourn this this last meeting for <laughs> <laughs> Keep <her> running <laughs> all right thank you all we are adjourned